Traders, I'm not going to continue trading today and I do have an important lesson. Let's talk about Baba trade, the Baba trade we had. It's not my biggest winner. As you can see, it's my smallest winner, but I think it's the more, most important one today, <laughs> education wise. Well, I did have some uh, nice winners. In NEO, in fact, I had uh, three trades. One of them was a loser. So if you look at uh, the end of my trading session today, I'm up $15,000. Uh, Tesla always paying my bills nicely, my best trade today. So you can uh, definitely take a look at uh, my trades right over here. Uh, right here was my Tesla long. That didn't work for long. I was kind of uh, happy I took my partial over there. Neo was uh, a first short, then a second long, and I also had a loser in between. But I won't talk about uh, the Baba trade because I think it's the most important one. I think education-wise, it's the most important one. And I'll tell you why. I was looking for a short. Why was I looking uh, for a short? I was looking for a short because at the same time that uh, the S&P was holding to the highs, it's now under the lows, the Nasdaq, which sometimes give me the, gives me the pre-warning about what is about to happen, not all the time, but sometimes the Nasdaq gives me a pre-warning about what is about to happen, was kind of losing the highs and it was somewhere around this area over here where I'm pointing right now. And at that point, it looked like the Nasdaq is kind of trying to move lower. At that point, I was looking for a stock that is relatively weak. Now, I would rather find a stock that is, 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 is not already uh, very much extended to the downside. I would rather find a stock that is reversing into a new slope and uh, gradually coming down under the lows. I couldn't find it. And uh, I asked in the trading room, I asked you guys to help me out. You pointed out a few stocks. One of them was uh, Baba. Uh, the other one was Baidu, which also worked out very nicely. But uh, let's concentrate on Baba because that's the only one I chose. So I was looking at Baba. Now let's take a look here. The technical formation of Baba is beautiful, especially if you take a look at five minute candles. I looked at first at one minute candles. I didn't really like it that much, but then I switched to five minute candles. I saw this beautiful breakdown formation right over here under 236.10. Actually, it could have been 236.20, but I, it, it played around a little bit. I wanted to make sure that it's coming down. So I posted it under 236.10 for a short. Now, what you're seeing here, is not the usual type of trades I would personally like to take. I don't usually look for breakdowns. I would rather find stocks which are reversing. And the topic of my lesson right now is uh, actually two things. One, breakdowns versus reversals. Not going to go through the whole logic of this, uh, but also market participation. So it starts with the market. In this case, NASDAQ. NASDAQ sometimes is a pre-warning to what is about to happen to uh, the S&P. And if you take a look at the NASDAQ, which the S&P is much more important, of course, it was slowly getting to the low. So it gave me, it gave me the pre-warning that I could look for a new low in the S&P and the NASDAQ is about to move lower. That's why I started looking for a short for a good candidate. Found BABA. Decided I'm going to trade BABA. However, the problem with BABA was that it was not a reversal, it was a breakdown. Now, what's the difference between a breakdown and a reversal? When you take a reversal, let's take, I could have taken, let's say if I noticed BABA at the right point, like 236.80, somewhere around here, this could have been the point where uh, I would have shorted it if I noticed it earlier. Why? Because then your risk reward is much better. You would have a stop loss over this level over here, you see. Let's say you short it here at 236.80 then your stop is going to be 237.90. Let's say one, a little bit more than one point stop loss. And then you take a look at, uh, uh, and then you look for a breakdown and your target would be approximately one point minimum, one to one risk reward. That's what you should be looking for. So you've got a good chance for BABA to make it to a new low without putting you in danger, meaning going through red territory. What happens in a breakdown? Breakdown does not work the same way. A breakdown normally fails. What do I mean fails? I mean, what's the definition of a failure in breakdowns? Well, the failure, in, it, it, and there's lots of definitions. You, you could argue with, with what I'm about to say. And there's different traders who would argue and would have their own definitions of, of a failure in breakdowns. But my definition of a, of a failure is that once you have the breakdown, let's say you're shorting or a breakup if you're going long, 
if you did not reach your target before going into uh, red territory, in my opinion, that would be considered to be a failure. It does not mean that you're not going to get the winner after all once it continues to come down and then gets you to the green uh, uh, to, to, to your target. But the, the first move down, if that did not reach my target, that's a failure. You're more likely to get your first target to get to your first target without a failure, without going through red territory in a reversal you're less likely to do that with a breakdown. Breakdowns would usually start nicely, pull back up, put you in red territory, not always. In this case, it did not happen. And then, if you're lucky, it's going to get you down to your target. Now, it depends on your style of trading. Some people prefer breakdowns. Some people prefer, prefer reversals. And there's a huge difference between breakdowns and reversals. I take both, but I prefer reversals. Now, sometimes you're lucky, like what happened to us with BABA, that you get to your first target without a pullback that puts you in red territory. Now, look at this pullback over here. See, this pullback over here, it's a pullback that actually took us all the way back to our entry point, which we call a retest. A retest is where you go back uh, to the point of the breakdown and then possibly continues lower. And then the next move down is normally taking you to your target. Now, what made me get into BABA's breakdown, decide that I'm going to take the BABA breakdown, although I don't normally take it, the Nasdaq. At the same time we took BABA, the Nasdaq broke down under the lows. The same time, or it was extremely close to the point of breaking down at the lows. It was quite clear that the Nasdaq is about to break down under the lows. Now, if you put everything together, if you put... Baba's short breakdown, which I'm a little bit concerned of for now, okay? And you look at the Nasdaq, and the Nasdaq is right now breaking under the lows, which is likely <laughs> to, to make the S&P, and it did, come down under the lows, because institutional traders are following the S&P, they're not following the Nasdaq. So if you're looking for institutional traders who will start selling, they're likely to start selling once the S&P is breaking under the lows. It's more important than the breakdown of the Nasdaq, okay? So... The Nasdaq is like the pre-warning. It's like my crystal ball sometimes to what is about to happen to the S&P. So the Nasdaq just broke down, which gives me probably a, a higher pro probability trade in, 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 in BABA. That makes me a little bit more relaxed about my BABA trade. Not totally relaxed. That's why the quantity is a little bit smaller as well. Breakdowns. I'm a little bit concerned. Quantity is a little bit smaller. So now I look at... Uh, the Nasdaq breaking down. I'm planning my BABA trade, planned it before the Nasdaq broke down, took my BABA trade short. Lucky enough, this could have been different, that uh, the Nasdaq continued down quite a lot uh, to the point, in fact, of closing the gap. Look at how beautiful it came down and closed the gap right over here, which is usually the point of reversal, exactly what we're seeing here. And BABA at the same time came down, uh, did reach my first target, and uh, of course pulled back up after I took my partial. And I'm still riding it, I'm still short Baba, so I've got a little bit bigger winner than, than what I just showed you. And hopefully it's going to continue now, I don't know. Anyway, the market's trending lower. So that, what I wanted to talk about here is look for a short in a stock that is relatively weak. Some of you guys posted, when I was looking for a short, some of you guys posted stocks which are 5% up, trending lower, they could and probably will come down when the market will come down or when the Nasdaq will come down. And then I asked you to start looking for stocks which are relatively weak. Like, look at BABA. At the point where we shorted it, it was in red territory. It started in green, but it was red. So BABA is relatively weak. You, you need to short stocks that are weak. If you, if you, if you, you know what, I'll say something I, 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 I said for a few times here in the trading room. If you walk into a bar and you look for a fight, you don't pick the bully of the bar. You don't pick the uh, football player, the guy who, uh, who looks like a guard. You don't, you don't pick the strongest guy in the bar. You, you decided you want to pick up a fight in the bar. <laughs> look for the weakest guy. Not that I usually do that. But some do. So I don't know if this example was, uh, <laughs> was the right example to give. But when you want to short a stock, you short the weakest ones. You don't pick up a fight with a stock that is up 5%. You short the 
the weakest one you see. And Baba was definitely uh, in this uh, definition. So watch the market. W expect the next move of the market. Watch the stock that you're trading. Expect the next move. Realize the difference between a reversal and a breakdown. Get ready for your first partial. Get ready also to be to go through red territory and probably continue. But again, it's not going to work the same. Breakdowns and reversals. Uh, I have a lot to say about reversals and breakdowns, and probably I'm going to say it some some other times. But uh, it's, <laughs> it's been a little bit uh, uh, longer uh, lesson than I expected. So anyway. Um, I'm happy to finish uh, this day in green too. Uh, so far, uh, the week is, uh, I'm, I'm having a good week. Um, three green days in a row, although my first uh, green day was just marginally up a few hundred dollars on Monday. Lucky with one good trade that put me in green territory, but yesterday it was amazing. Today is a very good day as well. And I'm happy that some of you joined me. I've, I've seen a lot of you in YouTube and uh, in, here in our main trading room joining me in some of my trades today makes me feel well. Um, you know what? I enjoy seeing you make money more than I enjoy making myself money. I, seriously, I'm not joking. I do. I do. When, when, I, when I get to see the way that uh, you guys are doing, it really makes me happy. So thank you for participating, uh, if only for that. And if you're on YouTube, um, how about giving us a thumb up? I think we earned it today. We will really appreciate if you could give us a thumb up. It helps our channel, helps more people like you find uh, day trading videos and this, I think, I believe, very good trading room. So thank you for participating with us too. And um, there's a button down there in YouTube which you can press on and subscribe and click the notification bell on if you want to see my future uploads. So thank you all for participating and I'll see you all tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay green and healthy. Bye traders.